Hello and welcome to another Revel Coach Conversation. Today, we are lucky because my sister Marcy Stout and me, Allison Nissen, the co-founders of Revel Coach, we have Jennifer Zock with us today. And Jennifer is the dynamic executive coaching expert at something called somatic awareness. And I am so looking forward to learning more about this and how we can apply this to our leadership and become all that we know we're supposed to be. So Jennifer, why don't you just go ahead and jump right in and tell us what somatic awareness is? Sure, I would love to. It's my favorite topic. (laughs) Somatic awareness is really about listening to to the body and the sensations. Have you ever had a gut feeling? And if you have and you've noticed, that's somatic awareness. awareness. Soma is the Greek word for body. So it would be equivalent to say body awareness. And, and I wrote a book because I'm so passionate on this topic somatic awareness, leading with body intelligence. And I really want to put this into the hands of, of leaders. And, you know, really it's applicable to anyone because a lot of people come away with, you know, they start with applying it in their, their professional lives and they're pleasantly surprised and that it works really well in their personal lives as well. What it really boils down to is I've, I've put it into a three in model in order to create a framework to make it a little easier to understand and also to apply. The three in network is for notice, name, navigate. So the the first N is probably the most important because that's noticing, noticing those physical sensations because we, because we're wired to survive, we get triggered. We can very easily get triggered into a fight, flight, or freeze response. Now we want this when the situation is truly unsafe. But it's problematic when the situation is just uncomfortable. And a lot of times in in our workplaces, in our day-to-day living, we're responding to situations as if they are unsafe when they're really just uncomfortable. And so we can intervene when we notice and we name, we understand that, wait a minute, I'm getting triggered here. This is a perceived threat. And then we can navigate. So I teach people to navigate by first noticing that physical sensation, like a tightness, the the heart beating faster. Uh, There are, are multiple different sensations that people have when their body is getting flooded with stress hormones. So we've got this six second window where we can intervene before the body gets flooded. And by doing so, we stay connected to our rational and logical thinking so we can make better decisions in in the moment. And uh, you know, I did a, an example with you that when we were preparing for this this call, Allison, would you mind just doing a, th- repeating that to give the our viewers kind of a taste for how this works? Absolutely. Okay. So bring to mind a difficult conversation and notice the physical sensations that arise. Scan the room, let your eyes land on something pleasing, and come back and let me know what happens to that physical sensation. Is this to Allison or to me? <laughs> I, I'll give you my version. I was thinking, Allison, you had already gone through this. So for me, I actually, oh, great. I, I was thinking of a scenario and yes. it wasn't too intense. It was just more like maybe more of a moment of insecurity. Like, am yeah. I saying this 
right? Am I holding it right? And I actually, um, I love this work and I really try with intention to not be so busy to slow down to hear my body, but I'm always, I'm not actually the best at it. I'm a very good student at it. So when uh-huh. at first I thought of the scenario pretty quick and then I was like, I'm not really feeling anything. And then when you said, then when you let it go, when you kind of go back through what happened, I found myself exhale and I quickly uh-huh. realized and I didn't realize it. Yes, that's exactly uh, how this works. And so can you think of some ways that, that you can apply this in your, in your work life and in your personal life? I mean, yeah, I do believe that breath work is the fastest way to keep your brain waves, not in the, you know, the alternative state, you know, the, the stress mode. Um, yes. And it's also a way of keeping your, you know, your heart rate at the normal pace and things like that. So I can see it um, helping just being cognizant of when you're kind of holding your breath. Yes, right. So breath work, there's all kinds of grounding techniques. We can also ask ourselves, is this unsafe or just uncomfortable? That's helped people when they are public speaking. And they, you know, because the body can respond like, oh, that's a group of saber toothed tigers when they're really not. And just by being able to say, is this unsafe, just uncomfortable, tuning into the breath, making the exhale, you know, longer than the inhale, calms the nervous system down, keeps us connected to our rational, logical thinking so that we can move forward in a productive way. So it's, it's all about calming that nervous system, making good decisions. The people that I work with, the hardest part of this is remembering to use it. Just like what you were saying, Marcy, is remembering to use it. And that's where the coaching really becomes important for people because it's a way of being able to form that habit, to form that awareness using the three and model to be, you know, in tuned enough to know when we're on the brink of an unnecessary stress response and being able to pull ourselves back out of that with breathing, with questioning, with grounding, with, you know, the, there's a whole toolbox and it's a matter of finding, you know, what works best for the individual. So it's notice name. And what was the third one? navigate navigate yes navigate those uncomfortable sensations being able to be with the uncomfortable and the more we do it i mean it takes practice and curiosity first and foremost but the more we do it the more our window of tolerance grows and the less we get triggered that's interesting and how did you get into this work well, I'll give you the short answer. <laughs> it, I was uh, made aware of Peter Levine's work. He started uh, the somatic experiencing. And he has a book called Walking the Tiger. And when I read his book, heard about his, his work, I'm like, wait a minute. I've been doing this all my life. I didn't know it was a thing. And then I want to step further with like, I'm actually doing this with my clients, <laughs> not realizing it was a thing that uh, something unique that was really helping them. And that brought me to where I am today on a mission to make this skill known as well known as emotional intelligence. And one of the ways that I'm doing that is by planting the seed with my book and then coaching people, coaching people in how to exercise the three N model to not only improve, they're going to feel better uh, because it, it takes down the stress, builds up the uh, energy. We communicate with other people better. We can be more creative and more innovative because there's also something called the polyvagal theory and i use you can use the stoplight colors to understand this so in the polyvagal theory yellow is the fight 
flight response. Red is the uh, freeze response. And green is the calm and regulated state. That's where we want to be because that's where we engage well with others. We feel safe. Really, it's about feeling safe, safe enough so that we can be creative, curious, and be at our best. Now, we all know that life happens and we run into stressors all the time. And we that that window of tolerance, it fluctuates. And so when we're at that edge and, you know, that can happen when we're having a bad day or maybe when we're under the weather, we're more likely than to get triggered. But the more we practice this, the bigger that window gets because and without the awareness, the, you know, the, the danger is then, you know, slipping into that fight or flight or freeze response. And we all we've all done it. We'll all continue to do it. And it creates a lot more stress when it's an overreaction. Yeah. So I, one of the reasons why Alice and I love this work that we do is we have conversations like this with fascinating people and we like to support your cause because we think it's amazing, but then we also get um, some free advice for us. (laughs) 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 Ask a personal question for me on my behalf. Um, Yeah, go ahead. A lot of my clients are executive women and Uh then meet with them on zoom pretty often. And I've done a lot of studies on the negative impacts of too much video time as it relates to a little bit more female than men, that mirror Mm -hmm. theory where women might spend a little time, you know, looking in a mirror, isn't healthy for a woman versus a male. There's all those research studies on it, Mm -hmm. but they also they're working with, with companies that they have the policies that they want the speaker to be seen. So they have to spend a lot of time on video. And I definitely feel a lot of my clients have uh, challenges, like maybe like a fake smile for like an hour, you know, where they're engaged like that or their posture or, yeah. you know, just sit, like their hamstrings. are. So I kind of blame it towards the physical thing that they're doing. But when I was hearing, uh-huh. I'm like, I bet you it is a little bit more, it's deeper than that. And there's probably stress under it, but they're cognizant of their non-verbal, you know, their non-verbal. So I'm just curious, Mm -hmm. how does your work apply to this type of scenario? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is there is a book, uh, it's called The Body Keeps the Score. And everything does begin with the body. So Mm -hmm. you're right on target there with the, um, the vagus nerve the vagus nerve is a super communication highway that's going between the, the the brain and the body in service of survival. So with your clients, uh, yes, they uh, the body is meant to move. And if they're in front of a screen all day long, it would, you know, serve them well to take a break from that when they can. And also being aware of those those nonverbals because those speak louder really than our verbals. And you mentioned a fake smile that can really work against uh, co-regulation. And here's what co-regulation is. It is um, a measure of, of safety. And if we're, and it's really important that we, we smile from the eyes and the mouth, because if it's just, just the mouth, then that gets perceived as, or can be perceived as a fake smile. The other person is not going, they may not be aware of it, but their body is, but that's going to feel unsafe. That's going to get in the way of the, the um, quality of the, the connection. So it's really staying in tune to how you're feeling in your body and then making adjustments to feel more safe and hold a space of safety. That's a big thing that I offer offer my clients is just creating that safe space where they can be themselves. The safer that person feels in their body, the better they're going to communicate, the better they're going to relate to others, the better they're going to lead, the better decisions that they'll make. So mm, insightful. So insightful. I agree. I agree. And I love that you have 
have mentioned that you know you would like this to be as important as emotional intelligence and you know that that became the big buzzword um what about 20 years ago or so and mm-hmm. and it's we think about that emotionally that connection but you're reminding us that it really does start in the body it's not all in the head right so exactly. we have to be we have to be head and heart we can't just be the head exactly in fact i'm going to be speaking on that very topic at a disrupt hr presentation next month that it is you know the answers that we need they're not just in our heads they're in our bodies too and it really starts with the body because if you think about it sensation is our first language first really universal language because none of us came into the world knowing how to speak but you know if you if you observe an infant they know when they need to be helped fed changed it's their sensations that are telling them that and then they they communicate that by wailing and then the caregiver gets to try to figure out what they what they need but as we the point is is as we become um more verbal our sensation we get it's always still there in the background but we get distanced from it but it's still a very important part of how we leave, live lead work play Because we are constantly taking in information, data, through our five senses. That's why it starts with the body. That's great. So um, as you move forward with this work, um, how how is it connecting with executives? Or how, not just executives, I know you do um, the coaching thing and working with companies and people. Is Mm -hmm. it a practice that you're trying to instill that a that a manager is teaching this to their teams or it's just a self-practice like ha- give us a little more insight of how it can go bigger than just yourself and how you can help others on this journey oh yes it can go much much bigger uh because often clients will come back be- and tell me that hey i'm teaching this to my team because once you're aware yeah, you know, it's not that hard it's just remembering to use it and people just haven't been taught this stuff so they don't know it but once they're aware and they're experiencing the benefits of it then they can share that with their team and then the wonderful thing that happens there is the co-regulation that happens and helping one another feel safe increasing the psychological safety and curiosity because we cannot be curious and judgmental at the same time. And we have to be in that green state before we can be curious. Otherwise, when we are in that yellow fight flight or that red tunnel vision, you know, the the body is just in the mode of of self survival. And then we're, we're not, we're not thinking about the, the collective. We're, we're focused on on our own survival. It's often compared to like a snake or a stick. If you that's something else that people can understand too. If you've ever been out on a hiking trail and you see something up ahead, you're not sure is that a snake or a stick, you're going to respond differently based on what it is. And so a lot of times we get into uncomfortable situations. We think they're a snake when they're really not. And um, uncomfortable conversations. I just heard from somebody yesterday that it was kind of interesting, the timing of him receiving the copy of my book. And it's very concise. And, you know, it took me a year to write the thing for that very reason, because I wanted something that was going to be, I know people don't have a lot of time to read something that was going to be thin and they could open up and get something out of right away. And uh, so this person was, uh, the book arrived just in time for a difficult difficult conversation that he was preparing for and it was just what he needed to to help this uh coach this particular uh leader because the he actually learned that the leader did care about his people it was just uh, a matter of of that nonverbal communication and so they could they worked through the notice name navigate to you know put the leader on on a better path and thus the team too 
Wow. I could go on and on with this conversation. <laughs> I have so many different scenarios in my head that I would love to run through, but I really want to thank you for coming on. How could people learn more about you? How could get they, how could they get their book? And by the way, where could they listen to your podcast? All right. Well, all of that is available on my website at www.somaticallyaware.com, somaticallyaware.com. And if you're on Amazon, then just go to the uh, search for Somatic Awareness, Leading with Body Intelligence, and you can find the book there as well. Great. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much. I love when people have found passion and congratulations on your book and building a business that you are just, you could just tell that you're thriving. And <laughs> Well, and, and thank you. Thank you to both of you for helping me to, to spread the word about this, this really essential, essential skill. Yeah. It's an essential skill and agent skill. You know, humans have been doing this for, you know, since the beginning of time. That's a good point. Yes, I haven't talked about it as an ancient skill, but I like that because I talk about, you know, our, our ancestors and how, you know, we've taken on that wiring. But yes, it's an ancient skill that we still need when we are because we want it when we're truly in danger. Right. But and now it's too busy to notice. So that's why your simple yes. you know, note, name, notice, and navigate is wonderful coaching. So again, yes. thank you so much. We appreciate all of our listeners that have joined us today. Thank you.